The last part of this lecture concerns how detergents function. Detergents and, of course, hand soap. If you look at a bottle containing shampoo or liquid soap, you'll find that they contain sodium dodecyl sulfate. Hopefully you recognize that the sodium would have to be the sodium cation, because adding sodium metal to water would give you a very interesting shampoo experience. Dodecyl stands for 12. So these are the 12 carbons. And then sulfate, maybe you know a polyatomic ion named sulfate, this could be a sulfate ion with this 12 carbon tail. You notice that the sulfate ion has double bonds and 12 electrons around it. Sulfur can actually do that. It has variations from the octet rule. One way this is typically drawn is with the hydrocarbon tail and a circle for the ionic regions. So we have a hydrophobic region and a hydrophilic region. When you place SDS on water, initially it will form an oily layer on top. The sodium ions and the sulfate portion, which are polar, will interact with the water to dissolve. But the hydrocarbon tail will form that oily layer on top. The oily layer is our hydrophobic region, and the water is our hydrophilic region. But if you shake up that container, you will get what is known as a micelle. This would be spheres of SDS. So if you look at the surface, we would have the polar heads on the surface surrounded by water and the sodium ions also surrounded by water. If you were to slice this sphere, you would see that all the hydrophobic tails are together on the inside, making a region that they like, which is nonpolar. The hydrophilic sulfate heads would be on the outside. So why do you need soap? Well, throughout the day, we might get oil or fat or grease spilled upon our clothes, and our body honestly makes some of these materials, like earwax and other things. So grease is not particularly soluble in water. It's a hydrophobic material. It has a little bit of hydrophilic character, but you notice that the acreage is very much nonpolar. So how do the micelles of soap work? Our hydrophobic grease prefers the hydrophobic region in the micelle, and it gets encapsulated and eventually rinses down the drain because the outside is water-soluble. Here are some different detergents besides sodium dodecyl sulfate. Initially, scientists came up with something called alkyl benzene sulfonates. These, unfortunately, are an environmental no-no because they don't decompose. So if they remain in the environment, they will make soap in places we don't want them, like a nice creek that we want to fish in. Scientists have realized that we're better off with these linear alkyl sulfonates, which degrade faster in nature, and so they decompose and don't give us soapy natural water. This brings up another idea about how you personally are constructed. Those of you who are interested in biology recognize that the cell is composed of phospholipids. These are materials that have a very long hydrocarbon tail, so that's nonpolar, and then some ionic character in the phosphate and the amine functionality here, which are polar. So how do phospholipids organize themselves in water? Well, they put the polar heads toward the water and the hydrocarbon tails toward the inside. I want you to think about what holds these phospholipids together. Well, we have dispersion forces for the fatty, nonpolar tail, 
and hydrogen bonding for the polar head. When I initially described intermolecular forces to you, I described rubbing a balloon on your head to build up static charge. That's the level of attraction that dispersion and hydrogen bonding forces have, that of static cling. Well, phospholipids make your cell wall. So you are held together by static cling. And I hope that makes sense to you because we need something that is easy to disrupt so that cells can divide. But we also need a barrier to keep things from the outside of the cell from going to the inside of the cell. Of course, we get salts and other things by different channels that are in your cell wall. 